message on a very controversial subject this morning, and the back doors are locked. You can't get out. And uh, so you just know you're just going to have to endure it to the end, and, uh, and, uh, and I like it. Amen. So let's go to Proverbs chapter 23. Anybody know what I did with my glasses? Let's do two verses. Proverbs chapter 22, verse number 28 first. Let's get that verse first. Everybody there say amen. amen. Verse number 28 says, Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. God said, what if you do, don't you move those landmarks that your fathers have set. Chapter 23 and verse number 10, God hits it again. He said, remove not the old landmark and enter not into the fields of the fatherless. Lord, help us to preach today in a way that will glorify the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Now, the reason I hadn't put up the tabernacle scene again this week, we're still preaching through the tabernacle, but there's something I, I'm not preaching per se on the tabernacle this morning, but there's something I want you to notice. That linen fence around it was a border. And I'm telling you, God said if anybody tries to come into that tabernacle area except coming through that front gate, which is a type of Jesus Christ, He said He'd kill them. And God sets up borders in this world. Now, I want to say to you this morning that what I'm preaching on, I'm preaching on illegal immigration. And one of the reasons I am preaching on it is not because I think you all need it so much. I'm preaching on it because our messages go, thousands of messages, go each month out across this country and are duplicated and repeated over again, and we never know where all they go. But I believe that we have a serious problem in this nation, and that we as preachers have let our nation down, and preachers in their churches have let, uh, they are the ultimate influence to political leaders. We have right now in this nation at least, 11 million illegal immigrants. There's two words that I want to mention. Number one is the word illegal. Unlawful, illegal immigration. The second word is immigration. Illegal, the first word. The second word is immigration. I want to say at the outset of this and preaching on what the Bible has to say about this subject is that I'm not opposed to legal immigration. I'm a debt. I'm a debtor. To the, to the idea and the doctrine of legal immigration. And that legal immigration is where our forefathers came through Ellis Island, filled out the proper papers, went through the proper procedures, went through legal channels to become citizens of the United States of America. Illegal immigration, though, is one of the branches of attack to destroy this nation. It is a major area that if it's not dealt with by the people of America, it is going to destroy this nation. Nations in past history that did not control their borders, or nations that soon were deteriorated and conquered and destroyed. As I said, I'm not opposed, neither do I believe that 99% of the American people are opposed to legal immigration. But I believe that the vast majority of Americans are deeply opposed to illegal immigration. It is not just a simple subject, though. In Deuteronomy, the Bible sets forth landmarks. The Bible was to be, the the land was to be divided, and it was commanded to establish borders. You can read that all through the book of Deuteronomy. The Bible teaches that there's landmarks. In our text, we found that we're not to remove those ancient landmarks, those borders and those lines that God sets. Borders are needed. Borders are good. Borders are right. In Genesis, God set a border in the Garden of Eden. He placed restrictions on what Adam and Eve could and could not do and what they, where they were to be and where they were not to be. In the book of Exodus, whenever the plagues came upon Egypt, God put a border between the people of Israel and the people of Egypt. And the plagues that struck the people of Egypt did not touch the people of Israel. God separated people. Israel's borders were established by tribe and set up by tribe. And you can literally read The legal documents in the Bible, the legal description of those properties. And to this day, God said the land would be forever belonging to the nation of Israel. In Matthew chapter 4, there were borders in Jesus' day. There were walls in the cities. And as Jesus went into different areas and geographical areas, there was borders set forth. I want you to take your Bibles to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 19 this morning just to give you about four or five passages of Scripture. And then we're going to take off. On this passage, on this message today, but in Deuteronomy chapter 19 
And in verse number 14, the Bible specifically tells us here, Thou shalt not remove thy neighbor's landmark, which they of old time have set in thine inheritance, which thou shalt inherit in the land that the Lord thy God giveth thee to possess it. Now, there's something that every human being really ought to know. We're not living in heaven. We're not even in the millennial reign. We're living in a sin-cursed, depraved world where there is a battle between evil and between good, and we're dealing with depraved men constantly. The issue of borders is so deep that it not only runs national borders, but it runs neighbors' borders. Each of you sitting in this congregation, they have a border around your home. The Bible goes further in Deuteronomy chapter 27 and verse number 17. The Bible says here in verse number 17, Cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark, and all the people shall say, Amen. God said that any person who takes it upon himself to move borders that's been established like that, he said they're cur- he said they puts a curse upon them. And I want to tell you what it seems to me like and un- unthinkable to me that we have leaders in our country that basically are saying that borders don't matter and that nationality does not matter and that laws do not matter. Now, in Deut- and Hosea, and this is the last verse we'll look at just for a little while, in Hosea chapter 5, way over there in, in the, if I can find it, hang on just a minute, Hosea chapter 5 and verse number 10, it'll be verse number 10, right before we get to Joel, Hosea chapter 5 and verse number 10, uh, Israel and Judah had a problem, and the prophet here is dealing with a lot of the areas that's causing the nation uh, to deteriorate and the nation to be destroyed. And one of the things he, he, you can read down through this chapter, and he talks about the judgment that is towards you, and he talks about a lot of different issues, their pride, their whoredoms, in verse number 4 and 5, uh, they're dealing treacherously against God in verse number 7. Uh, but in verse number 10, here's another one of the issues that they had a problem with in that country. The princes of Judah were like them that removed the bound. You know what he was saying? He's saying that country is a, that has got to where they've removed their boundaries. Now, there are physical boundaries. There are also spiritual boundaries. There have and always will be borders set up by God. When we get into the millennial reign, the thousand-year reign, God is going to establish rule and reign. And when somebody is given reign and somebody is given rule, there's a jurisdictional area that is set up for that. There will be a new city that will come down out of heaven and hover over the earth. New Jerusalem. The Bible said that that city has walls. And the Bible in Revelation 22 explicitly lists those who cannot enter into that city. They cannot come through those borders. In fact, the Bible not only describes the walls of that city... But it also describes the gates of that city. And the Bible said that nothing that shall defile shall enter therein. God establishes borders, and in borders there's something real particular. God uses borders to separate evil from good, wickedness (coughs) from righteousness. As I said, God is a God of borders, and God is also a God of separation. God instructs His people, Wherefore come ye out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And I'll receive you, be a God Father unto you, and you be my children. Nations in the Bible are to have borders. God separates, establishes borders, separation. God is a God of division. God is a God of lines and distinction. Nations are to have borders. I want to say at this point that our nation right now is full of fools. It's full of fools. Anyone who thinks that you cannot abide by the borders and the boundaries of a nation has become foolish in their thinking. Now, I want to say that it's by, by and large those in this nation who are promoting the, uh, the uh, disregard of borders and allowing illegal immigration are your liberal-minded people. And those liberal-minded people are influenced in a lot of our politics in this country. And I don't understand why, but it just seems to me like they're against everything Christian, everything patriotic, everything historic, everything that we've ever stood for in this country. And somehow or another, in their twisted and perverted and reprobate thinking, they seem to think that they are good people because they are teaching lawlessness to people of other nations. I don't understand anyone. Politicians are literally promoting crime when they're promoting illegal immigration. We in this country have borders not only of land, but we have borders of water, 
There's uh, in the in the waters on on the ocean. There's borders that are established. Ships come in through there. They're on our property. We also have it not only established on land, but we have it in sea. But we also have air. And when a plane comes in our airspace, buddy, uh, the jets hit the air. And so I don't understand why our people and our leaders cannot understand that it is simple and it's very clear and a very uh, realistic part of life that you have borders. Um, your property, as I said a while ago, has borders. Amen? Uh, when we sell a piece of real estate, that legal description has to be there. And if they're going to have title insurance, they've got to have a legally described and legally uh, clear title to that thing so that the lines, and so you know where to put the post at, you know where you can plow and where you can't plow, where you can park your truck and where you can't park your truck. This issue of illegal immigration is a religious, number one issue. It is a political issue, and it is an economic issue. As I said, the Bible is a book of borders. I want you to think with me for just a moment. Uh, the Bible talks about trespassing. Forgive us our trespasses. What does it mean when we trespass? It means we have entered into an area that we do not belong into. Uh, trespassing, in other words, if we, if, we, if we violate one of God's laws and do that which we're not supposed to do, we have trespassed. God has set a border and said, don't go past there. It's a, just to cross over the line or to go where we're not supposed to go. I want to say this to you this morning on the deeds to your houses and the deeds to your land. I don't think there's much trouble in this church house. And as I say, this is one time when I will admit that I'm probably preaching to the people that will listen to this message more so than the people that are listening this morning. But I tell you what, if you believe that, that illegal immigration is all right, then I'll tell you what, I've got some stuff I want to park at your place. I've got some hay I want to put up on your property. I want to go over there with my chainsaw and start cutting down trees on your property. If you honestly think that illegal immigration is all right, then I'll tell you what, me and a few other guys will just come to your place and we'll go to cutting trees down. We'll go to plowing things up. We'll go to doing what we want to do because it, you, there's, there's, who says you can have your own property? Who says you can tell me to get off your place? I mean, if the, if the borders of America is no good, the borders to your property are no good. Let me tell you something, folks. This is what's coming. Socialism is being promoted and preached by the liberals in this sense. I, I get amazed at these liberals who believe that illegal immigration is all right. I tell you what, they're the first people that sue you if your dog wets on their flowers. They'll sue you and they'll hire a Philadelphia lawyer if your child falls his, rides his bicycle across the backside of their yard. The same people who want the Texas and Arizona people and those ranchers and those farmers to let those illegals come across their farms will sue you in a heartbeat up here in St. Louis and Kansas City and, and Washington, D.C. if you put your foot on their ground. I mean, if you want to get sued, just go into towns and drive your car up on their lawn. <coughs> they believe in borders, just somebody else's borders that they want broken. Now again, let me say to you this, I'm not against uh, immigration. I'm against illegal immigration. I'm against rewarding illegal immigration. I'm against multiculturalism that has been brought into this country through illegal immigration. I am against the policy of a pluralistic society that has been promoted through illegal immigration. You say, what do you mean by that? I mean by this. You go down to Walmart and you're going to buy something. If you're not careful, you can't find English language on it. All who come here to this United States of America, I believe, and our forefathers taught, and the Bible backs up, that they should accept, number one, our Constitution. I'll tell you what, if you're going to be a part of this nation, you ought to get in line and get underneath our Constitution. Amen? I don't, listen, here with what's happening. We are seeing the balkanization of the United States. Now you say, Reggie, what's the balkanization of the United States? Balkanization of the United States is what happened in many of the European countries where you had all these different, you've got Muslims and Hindus and Christians, and they all get their little enclaves inside the same nation. And then pretty soon what you have is a divided people. They hate each other. You can't even cross the streets. Hey, we've got it in the slums and in the cities right now where gangs are ruling. You can't even cross into the other street. There are certain streets you don't go, no, don't go past that street, man. That's their territory. That's called balkanization. 
And what's happening to America is, I'm going to hang on to your hat now. I'm going to tell you something. I'm not a racist, and don't you call me a racist. You listen to me real good this morning. Racism has been redefined like sodomite has been redefined. A racist is one who thinks that he is superior to a person of another color. I've never believed that. I don't believe that. I believe Jesus tasted death for every man. But let me tell you something. God says in His Word that He established the boundaries and the borders. And I'm going to say something to you. It's not racism to, to profile people in law enforcement. I'm going to tell you something. You walk into the, the place where I'm at with a turban on your head and a something bulky under your robe, I'm going to look at you pretty squirrely. I'm going to keep my eye on you. If you're dark complected, got a beard and a hook nose and a turban on your head, I'm going to watch you, buddy. And if you don't like that, I don't care what you like. I'm saying this to you. Listen, if I was in, when I, I've been in foreign countries, an American climbs off the bus, buddy, they recognize him. They tag him. They racial profile him instantly. There's nothing wrong with racial profiling if you're defending and protecting the citizenry. All right? Has nothing to do with racism. Now, I'll tell you, we need to get this down. And your kids need to get this down. Your kids need not feel intimidated because they understand that there are differences in people. And because, let me tell you something. Uh, and I'll just get into it. Presum- I just, number one, I believe that when you come in this country, you ought to get underneath this Constitution. Amen. Secondly, you ought to be underneath our currency. Yeah. Most illegal immigration is about coming up here and getting money and sending it back to Mexico. And those illegal immigrants, by their very nature, aren't signed up for anything. In the sense of paying taxes. Because if they let it be known who they are, then, then they're found out. So thirdly, I believe that everybody who comes here ought to get in our, our method of communication. It burns me off to get on a telephone and offer to go to Amen. I don't want to have to read Spanish on a box of cereal to find out what I'm looking for. This is America. We voted legislatively in the 18th century to use the English language. It, it, it beat out German language by one vote. Most people don't even know that. We came within one vote speaking German. By one vote. It is the law of the land to speak English in this country. I don't think there ought to be any accommodations. Special accommodations for somebody. You go come over here. You ought to learn English before you get here. You say, we're not being nice and kind. Yep, I'm being kind to them. Let me tell you who's mean to them. And that's the people who tell them, oh, you don't need to learn English. And we'll just accommodate you. you don't tell you, the best thing that ever happened to them is to learn English. You're not being good to them. I'm not saying be, be mean to people. I'm not saying be abusive to people. I think we ought to try to win them to Jesus Christ. I thank God for many churches, good churches in America, who have evangelistic efforts for Hispanic people. They're trying to win them. Well, that's the best thing you can do. But, I'll say this, they ought to come under our communication, both by verbal and by print. And I don't think special accommodations. Let me ask you a question. If we're going to give special treatment to the Spanish-speaking people, why not give it to the Germans? Why not give it to the Egyptians? Why not give it to uh, the Czechoslovakians? Is there something special about Spanish-speaking people that they deserve to have their language printed? That they deserve to have their I mean, for any government officer, a, 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 a worker to have to accommodate them in a special way? Is that not special rights? I think they also ought to come under our culture. You say, Reggie, what do you mean by that? Let's just get honest this morning. Every time that they have a ruckus in L.A., or some of these southern cities, or these cities where there's a large enclave of them, and they get mad at the world, you know what they bring out? They do not bring out the American flag. They bring out the Mexican flag. 
And let me tell you something, brother. You're going to fly that stinking thing in this country. You can hit your hide and hit the border, as far as I'm concerned. This is America, the United States of America. And don't you fly your stinking Mexican flag in this country. We whipped you. And we'll do it again. If that's too stout for you, I'm sorry. That it's that. You're right. You're right. No, what I'm sorry is for you that you have that your soul that your soul shall down. You've been so cowed down and intimidated that that kind of preaching bothers you. That's what I'm sorry for you about. I'm saying this to you. Listen, I've watched those down here in our schools now, boys. This me. This has been on the news. Boys who wore shirts with American flags on them getting beat up by Mexican boys at school because they wore an American flag. I'll tell you something. Don't you do that in Wright County or Booger County. We'll get you. You thump on some boy around here with an American flag on his deal because you're a Mexican buddy. I'll tell you what. You're fixing to get it. We will whoop you. We might even bend your rear end over a pole and cane whoop you and, and you'd be so glad to head to Mexico. I'll tell you that's sorry. I want to tell you something. Mexico to this day is a third world country full of Catholicism. Doesn't know the gospel. Doesn't know freedom. Doesn't know prosperity. Why would I want a Mexican flag flying on this land? So, Mr. Mexican, you want to come up here? Go around up there to Ellis Island. Fill out the papers. Wait your turn. Come in here. Be a man about it. Quit being a criminal. They ought to do our culture. Amen. They ought to be in our culture. They're going to come up here. You're going to be an American. We Americans, whether you like it or not, we defeated the Mexicans. We whooped the Indians. I didn't say we did everything right to everybody. Are you listening to me? As far as I'm concerned, what we should have done when we whooped the Indians and said, Hey, now you're Americans. Buy your farm. Do what you want to do. Go hunting. Go fishing. We shouldn't have put them on the reservations. And, we're, and now we're eating it because the reservations have become the centers of cesspool gambling. And I'll tell you something else. We shoved those Indians on the reservations into poverty and obscurity. And we bred hatred in them for us. And what we should have said is, listen, ain't going to be no reservations. If they're going to give them something, give them all 400 acres out there, the best farmland there was, and say, listen, can't help it. We whooped you. We're Americans, but we're going to treat you the best we can. It's up to you now. I like, I'll tell you, I like that preaching. I'll lay men up. I don't know what that'll, that something, I get to banging that thing and it gets to doing this deal there, amen. But I'm saying this to you. I'm not saying we've done everything right. We haven't. Can I tell you, America's been made up of... Did you know who came to America? Well, down in Georgia, did you know that the, the, the Wesley brothers came to Georgia missionary work because Georgia was where England was sending all their prisoners. But God sent a revival to Georgia, and to this day, Georgia's got some of the most... some of the wise, most widespread Bible-believing churches that's in this land. America's made up of people of all kinds, sinners... Wicked, mean people, but a people that God has blessed in His sovereign mercy. I will tell you something. Can I say further? We whooped the Japanese. I ain't mad at nobody. I'll tell you some of the nicest people I know are Korean people and Japanese people. I can't, in fact, I'll tell you something. I'll just stay with something. Karen, the church, and I'll be forever grateful. You sent us on a trip here a few years ago, and we went up to Alaska and so forth, and there was a whole bunch of Korean, honey, wasn't they Korean people? I believe on the ship. I don't think they were Asian people. And I'm pretty sure it was Korean people. Let me tell you a little something. I told Karen. I said. I said we're we're already behind those people. Those Korean men. I tell you, they were gentlemen on that ship. You never saw one Korean woman with a slit up her dress, showing her thigh, short dress, cleavage, and all that. Uh, they dressed like ladies. They were they were proper. They they had manners. They didn't walk around. You know, with their pants hanging down to their britches and their hat on backward. I tell you, they were respected. You could tell. I guarantee if they'd have had their kids with them, those kids would have been minded. I have a respect for Asian people. Let me say something to you, though. 
lot of people cuss FDR because he put the Japanese people in internment camps. Let me tell you something. You'd have had to, I wasn't here, but I can tell you the people that were in America at that time, they understood it. I'm not saying we've done everything right. But let me tell you, we're in a depraved, sin-sick world. You're not going to have, this is not utopia. There's bad things happen. And there's bad things happen to good people. Can I say we whooped the Germans? And I don't think we ought to apologize to Germany for whooping them. And I don't think we ought to apologize to Japan for whooping them. The ones I think we ought to apologize to is the Vietnam veterans and the Korean War veterans that we didn't let whoop them. There's three areas. Number one, political. Let me tell you what's going on. You know, you know I'm preaching the truth. The liberals, plug your ears, and the Democrats party, I'm talking about the Democrat party, I had a man tell me not too long ago, he's a Democrat, he said, Reggie, he said, I, I, my party left me. He said, I can no longer, he said, I don't know what I'm going to do, but he said, I can't be that. He said, that, he said they're for everything I was ever taught it was against. But I want to say this, and that the liberals know that there's a, bloating, a, a voting block with a Latino vote. I don't know whether you're aware of it or not, but there are more Latino voters at this present time than there are black voters in America. Can I tell you something further? If the white, historical, Judeo-Christian Americans don't get a hold of this thing, the Latinos and the blacks will wind up killing each other someday in a civil war. You listen to me. If we allow this balkanization, let me tell you something. You tell a white man you're an American. You tell a black man you're an American. You tell a Hispanic you're an American. And don't you come across, let me tell you something. I've got German blood in me and I've got Irish blood in me. And I don't go around saying... Uh, you know, with a with a German uh, Irish hat on and saying, "I'm Irish American. I'm an American, and I'm thankful my forefathers left that potato when that potato famine hit." Amen. I'm glad they came over here, and I'm especially glad. I'm sure they were Catholics, and they were probably my German ancestors were probably Catholic too. And I'm glad they got over here, and got away from them pedophile priests. I'm glad they got over here and heard the gospel of Jesus Christ and got saved. And I'm tell you what, I'm enjoying the blessings of Almighty God. But I tell you, just because I'm a German, I, I shouldn't go back and hammer around and tell everybody I want special rights because I came from Germany. I don't I have special rights because I came from Ireland. You come over here, you got to take on what they are. But I'm telling you something, the liberals have been playing to the Latino vote. And fanning the Latino vote by illegal immigration. And, and I'll tell you the problem I have, and you Latinos listening to this, you listen to me right now. If you're an American citizen, why are you for lawlessness? Why are you for letting illegal people in? Why don't you stand on the truth? Why don't you quit being a lawbreaker yourself? Why are you promoting politicians to do laws that will make them citizens? Why are you promoting this? Are you not an American can you not see the damage that you're going to do? Politicians who won't stand by the law. Now I'm going to bust some of your bubbles. The president that started this mess is Ronald Reagan. In 1986, Ronald Reagan signed in the legislation legalizing 2 million, 2 million, 2.6 million illegal immigrants by the stroke of a pen he made them United States citizens. What did Ronald Reagan do at that time? He ain't right about everything. I think about 96% he's real good on. But he, there's 4% where he's dead wrong. What Ronald Reagan did at that point in time was he made those who were coming across illegal feel like if they stayed here long enough, there'd be another executive order, another legislative empowerment to let those people be, be naturalized citizens. So you just keep coming. And what he did was he bred illegal immigration into the whole culture by that law in 1986. Just because he's a Republican and Ronald Reagan, I ain't giving him a break on it, amen? If I'm going to preach on Bill Clinton, I'll preach when Ronald Reagan's wrong too, all right? And I'm sorry, and I, I wish he would have had better sense than to have done that. The Bushes were particularly favorable toward illegal immigration. Jeb Bush is thinking about running for president. He'll not get my vote. He's married to a Catholic Latino, and that's fine if he wants to, but because of that, 
The whole family has turned its deal and they're willing to break the law just to appease their family ties. To get the votes in the, in, in states where there's a Arizona Governor Burr, isn't it a shame? You know why I know we're, we're in the last days of judgment? Because women are ruling over us. But I tell you, it's a shame that the Arizona, and by the way, what the secret to this is going to be is the states once again reclaiming their constitutional rights. And isn't it a shame that Arizona went out there and tried to do what the federal government already had laws to do, and then the federal government turned around and sued them? Bless God for Arizona. Governor Brewer, stay right in there. We're backing you with our prayer, and if we have to, we had one guy went out there with the borders anyway. We've got, uh, uh, Mary's son is a border patrol agent out there right now. And I'm just, I don't know what's in, but I'm just sitting on the border, I don't know what's in Arizona. But isn't it a shame that a state is trying to control its laws and so forth, and the federal government under Bozo the Clown up there suing that state? Liberals are selling this country out for political control. America, as a Christian nation, you just well get this down, has no value to the liberals. All the traditional freedoms, beliefs, and convictions have no value to a liberal. And can I say something? Let's just talk about the Republicans for a little bit. I just wonder if they're going to have enough guts to stand up there, they've got power in, that, in, in the legislature. I just hope and pray we got some liberal Republicans that ought to be voted out. Amen. If they're not going to stand for the Constitution, I say out of here. Amen. Go over where you're supposed to be to start with. I think they call them rhinos, Republican in name only. The second issue is not, the first issue is political. It is a political ball being played to win power in this nation. And again, I want to say, to sell out our Constitution and our laws to win votes by supporting illegal immigration and unlawfulness is wicked to the core. And any politician who supports that ought to be voted out of office. Number two, religious. I can remember 28 years ago, Jack Chick made this statement. 28 years ago, Jack Chick said this statement. He said that the Catholic Church, and by the way, I did some research on this and found out, that a few years ago when they had that National Latino Work Strike Day, I don't know if you remember that, they, they, they struck and they weren't going to do anywhere, that the Catholic Cardinals, a group of them, went to meet George Bush and told him that he needed to support the amnesty and the legalization of all these 11 million illegal immigrants. Does anybody? Why would a Catholic Cardinal be interested in legalizing all these people? Because 98% of them are Catholics by name at least. And the Catholic Church is working to destroy America by illegal immigration to increase their proportion of population. You don't like that? I don't care. Amen. Number three, it's an economic problem. And this is the one I want to camp about, and this is the one that's the real problem. The first two could be fixed and fixed pretty quick and pretty easily. You can vote political leaders out. You can put pressure on them. And if enough pressure comes to the American people and the politicians find out that's what we're not going to stand for, it, they'll change course. When that's changed course, you won't have to worry about the, the religious issue. But the economic issue is the one that gets to us. Years ago in this country, this country was full of dairy farms. There's an old dairy barn on every corner. From Sea Highway to ZZ Highway at one time, there were six or seven operating, functioning dairy farms. There might be one now, or maybe two, I don't know, and they're off, they're off and on. All across this country, during the 90s, I sold out 850-some individual dairymen in this barn across the highway. I averaged two per week for eight years. I knew what was happening. They couldn't make it. I'll sit at their kitchen tables. Being in that kind of business, I used to go out west, and I'd go to... Uh, New Mexico and, and uh, Idaho and some of those states where these big dairies are at. You go out there, cause those, and the reason I was interested is because those guys bought lots of dairy heifers. They were building these massive dairies. I would go out there. I'd walk in those big parlors. They'd be milking double 20s, 20 cows on the side. There'd be five illegal, ex, illegal aliens inside those milk barns. And what I soon realized was that I was selling cattle to the people that were going to kill the family farm here. Now, let me tell you something. Those big dairies could not operate at the price of milk and feed that they were operating at 
if they weren't using illegal immigrants to milk their cows. Are you listening to me? Down over the hillside, what you couldn't see out of sight would be five or six or ten old junk trailer houses that they drug in there behind a semi, unhooked, not hardly fit, fit for a hog to live in, and they would move from ten to twenty illegal immigrants into those trailer houses, pay them cash payments, paying them nothing compared to U.S. labor, and they're taking that money back down there. And what's happened was it allowed them to produce milk by the tonnage, by the semi-loads, and, and drive the family farmer out of business. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I'm a comp- competitor. I love United States competition. I mean, just go at it. If you can make a better mousetrap, help yourself. But it's not right to cheat and have unlawful competition. And let me tell you to this very day, there are people in this church house that cannot even dream about farming because our government and our people have been so greedy and so influenced that they allowed illegal immigration. Let me give you another example. Tyson Foods, and I hope they get this CD. But Mrs. Tyson, they're, they're, a bit, they're the world's largest farmers. Mrs. Tyson was on, the, was on the advisory board to Bill Clinton out of Arkansas. Tyson's found that out of Arkansas. Tyson's plants are, have historically been full of illegal immigrants. They made their millions on the backs of the working American people who are legal and trying to work legal by using illegal labor. You go down to the chicken houses right now, what you won't see is back in those back areas. In fact, in Branson, Missouri, I can take you to Branson, Missouri right now. There are, are mobile home, junk mobile home enclaves back there that's housing the illegal immigrants that are serving the tables at the fancy Branson restaurants right now. Now, at this point, my heart almost turns to these illegal immigrants. Because they're being pulled up here by greedy American people. Some of your largest meat manufacturing, you've heard it on the news, arrest as many as 300 illegal immigrants in one raid at, 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 at meat packing plants. How many American fathers could have had a job there? And let me tell you something, we're going to pay for this. You cannot do it. it. It kills industry. It kills manufacturing. And manufacturers and business people, pretty soon you can't take the pressure. You've got the U.S. government regulating you to death on one side. And here you've got fighting the labor cost on the other side. And here's what I'm telling you. The people in America that are hiring illegal immigrants ought to be the number one target of the FBI if they're going to do something. They ought to be shut down. It ought, they ought to pass a law next week that if you hire one illegal a- immigrant, you, your business will be shut down. They'll put the lock on the front of the door. I tell you, you shut down a five or 10,000 cow dairy, buddy, they'll hire some workers in a, her- in a heartbeat. But those dairies ought to be shut down. Those meat packing places ought to be shut down. Every business in this country, every, every garage, every shop, every restaurant, Anybody who is hiring illegal immigrants is a lawbreaker themselves. And they ought to be shut down. Let me say further, it's economic damaging to our country in that our housing, we're housing now illegal immigrants. We're educating illegal immigrants. We're forcing our schools to take them into classes. We're forcing our teachers to deal with kids who can't speak English. We're forcing our hospitals to take care of them free of charge. If it's not stopped, we will have a constitutional breakdown. We're going to have to stand. We're going to have to get back to states' rights. The Tenth Amendment. Write it on your brain. The Tenth Amendment of the Constitution restrains the federal government from doing anything that it does not expressly call for in the Constitution. We'll have a constitutional breakdown. Second of all, we're going to see continued lawlessness. Listen to me carefully. Gangs out of Nicaragua, Mexico, are absolutely ruling the streets of our inner cities. They're having drug wars. Our courts are overloaded with judicial loads dealing with illegal immigrants and the consequences of their crime. We will wind up with, a, with balkanization and civil wars in areas of our country battling for turf ground. Number three, there will be a confusion of biblical redemption. Solomon brought in strange wives. He immigrated illegal immigrants into Israel and it destroyed that nation. And how it destroyed it was it destroyed the spiritual foundations of that nation. I do bless God for the churches that are ministering and trying to reach out 
to the Hispanic and illegal immigration population trying to win them to Jesus Christ. But let me tell you something. If you're not careful, that can only aid and abate. And pretty soon your heart is so turned to the individual that you don't have the guts to be honest and say you're a lawbreaker. And until you start obeying God, how can we, until you start obeying the laws, how can we teach you to be a Christian when we're advocating promoting your own lawlessness? Number four, the loss of historical American Christianity. The Bible has been our strength. There's all the difference in the world between Mexico and America. I don't see American people lined up trying to sneak across the border. Let me tell you something. When are we going to wake up? The Bible has made this nation great. It has made this nation free. I want to tell you, and I'll close, and give you the impact that we're experiencing right now of illegal immigration. Number one, terrorism. Now listen to me good. Three of the four pilots that crashed the planes on 9-11 were illegal immigrants. Three of the four pilots were illegal immigrants. And we let them in this nation. Our porous borders in the south now are allowing hundreds of thousands each year to come in our nation. To where now there's just the base count of 11 million and some people think up to 19 million could possibly be in this nation of illegal immigrants. Border, on the, here's the problem about the terrorism issue. To be honest with you. If you're not careful, a Mideastern person from Iraq, Iran, would be very hard for me to tell between a Mexican. You just be honest about it. I mean, you know, I'm not that good at it. And it's a known fact. Let me tell you, I've been doing some research. It is estimated by some law enforcement departments in America that there may be up to 5,000 sleeper cells of Mideastern terrorists that have come through our poorest Mexican borders waiting for. And we've got some people who are absolutely disturbed at the, law, at the federal law enforcement because they're active. They just, it's like we don't touch that. We don't talk about that. We're not going to deal with this. It's a racial issue. You're going to cause trouble. You're going to cause the, the political issue now. is going to, going to turn the votes against the party. So be quiet. But it's estimated by some law enforcement that there's up to 5,000 sleeper cells, not of Mexicans, but of Mideastern descent, posing as Mexicans in America, and they are connected and interconnected, and they're waiting for the moment to strike. And when they strike, they're going to strike all of the United States at, at specific targets and try to bring this country down. 5,000 sleeper cells? Number two. The impact of illegal immigration is not just terrorism, the potential for it, but crime. This past week, an 11-year-old American girl was shot by three illegal immigrants and died in her mother's arms in the car. Officers repeatedly are being slain and mowed down by illegal immigrants. Listen to me carefully. Twelve U.S. citizens die every day by an act of crime at the hands of an illegal immigrant. Every day in America. Every day in America, 13 U.S. citizens die from a drunk illegal immigrant driver. You can go on the Internet now, folks, and find the columns in the gallery of the pictures of the families and individuals. They now have an Internet site of the people who are being killed by, by illegal immigrant drivers. They don't have insurance. They don't have anything. They're driving. You and I have to buy it or we'll, we won't even get a license. And they're driving around. And they're driving around in extremely high numbers of drunk drivers. And right now, the statistics by the own, our own government says that 13 U.S. citizens are dying per day by, from drunk illegal alien drivers in America. So you've got 12 Americans that are killed by criminal acts of illegal immigrants every day. You have 13 Americans being killed by drunk drivers every day. 80% of all illegal drugs are carried and smuggled in the United States by illegals. Every day that you live now, eight children that are U.S. citizens are sexually molested by illegal immigrants. Our hospital emergency rooms are clogged beyond repair. 
in some of the major areas where your illegal immigrants have gathered together, on Saturday and Friday and Sunday nights, you cannot even hope to get into the emergency room. They're stacked up out there with gunshot wounds, knife wounds, having children, and we're legalizing the birth of those children, and there's, and there's an issue to that. Uh, that's not at all what our forefathers intended. Mexican and Hispanic gangs are ramping in our cities, establishing turf grounds, totally controlling their areas. Police won't even, are, are, are afraid to even go in the areas. Listen to me carefully. We have currently at least 267,000 illegal immigrants incarcerated in American prisons. There's 46,000 in our federal penitentiaries, 74,000 in our state penitentiaries, and 147,000 incarcerated in our local and county jails in America. We are spending as a nation of people $5.8 billion just to incarcerate those people. And we wonder what's wrong with our nation. We're spending uncountable money hiring new border patrols and officers at a cost. And we're seeing some of our greatest young men mowed down by drug cartels. There is a total of the latest statistics, 1,288,619 crimes being committed annually of various types by illegal aliens. The drug trade and culture is breeding crime at an all-time rate. It is collapsing our judicial and our penitentiary system. There's 130,909 sex crimes committed by year, per year by illegal aliens. That means, folks, that we are having 93 sex offenders crossing our borders into this nation every single day of the year. Kenny, every day of the year, 93 sex offenders are coming across the border. And let me tell you something. Let's just be honest with you. You read it. You check me out. See, did you know that among those gangs... The talk is this, get a white girl, get a white girl, rape a white girl, rape a white girl, rape a white girl. That is the ultimate deal of their gangs. Not funny anymore, folks. I'm tired of it. There are over 400,000 unaccounted for illegal alien criminals with outstanding deportation orders. That means we don't have a clue where they're at. We've got deportation orders for them to get them out of the country, but we don't know where they're at. 400,000 of them running loose in this country. And Obama and his judicial department want to cast a guy as Governor Brewer for, one, for just normal stops, making sure you're an American? I say to you that we have the most unpatriotic, the most unchristian, the most ungodly, the most un-American president that has ever sat in the White House. How many citizens will be killed by illegals in car accidents this coming year? It doesn't mean much to us until it's our daughter, until it's our son, until it's our grandpa. And when I looked on the Internet and I saw the pictures of those beautiful families and their daughters and their sons and their fathers, fathers killed, mothers killed, and they're no longer with them by an illegal alien driving drunk in a car in America. And we've got politicians saying we need to give amnesty to all these people. And, uh, and we, need to, we need to be nice to these people and not get them out of the country. We have lost our ever-living mind. Amen. Just this past week, a missionary by the name of Nancy Davis driving in a car coming out of Mexico into the United States, a missionary into Mexico. I don't know if you saw her picture. Godly looking woman. Sweetest, sweetest countenance. Her and her husband was approaching, was driving down the road, and they saw what they knew was trouble. And he had already told his wife because of where they were at, they knew it was trouble. He said, if we get roadblocked, he said, I'm not stopping. Just get down in the seat. Drug gang blocked the road out. He ran the blockade, busted through them. When he did, they opened up with machine guns on them. And a bullet hit his wife, Mrs. Davis, in the back of the head and killed her. He drove 70 miles to the American border before he stopped with her bleeding in the floorboard of that car. Right now, the Mexican government cannot control the drug cartels. They are beheading people, folks. You're talking about vicious. We're not playing with stuff here. We're talking about mean stuff. We've got a boy that grew up in this church that's a border agent down there right now. 
And let me tell you something. His life is not worth spit to those people. And I'm telling you, Mary, I'm going to start praying for him. I have not been praying for him like I need to. But I thank God that somebody's down there trying to give us a chance to be free up here and do our business. Folks, I tell you, it's sick. I'm so fed up with our leaders playing monkeying around with this thing. Let me tell you what I think ought to happen. If an illegal immigrant is caught in this country with, with, with illegal drugs, I think they ought to hang him just two foot shy of the border down there on a, on a, dead, on a dead tree by a straight rope and let him hang there. Let me tell you, if you'll line that border up with a bunch of illegal aliens that were drug smugglers and you line that thing from Mississippi to California and you line it with a bunch of, they'll stop coming, they'll stop coming! Let me tell you something, a rancher down in Arizona going out to check on his place and they're coming through so much they've got a trail of trash, the trash and he goes out there to check on it and they mow him down with a gun on his own land. What are we talking about? We should have sent the National Guard down there and went into the Mexican border and said, you bring us those guys or we'll hang you all. Let me tell you, if we had the candies running America back in the 1800s, Texas would still be in Mexico. California would still be in Mexico if we had candies running our country like we do now. I'm sick of this multiculturalism, pluralistic society. Don't you speak Spanish to me. If I want to learn it, I'll learn it. And I'm going to say something to you. If you don't like it, I don't care. By and large, it's apparent to me that the Mexican people who are coming over here don't like America, don't like us. All they want is our money, and, and you fly their flag, you're telling me you don't like this country. I'm telling you something. Now, if I was president, I'd give you a hot ride out of this country. Yeah. By and large, they despise whites, and they are making movies now predicting the Mexican takeover and reclamation of the lands that they had taken from them. Right. If you think I'm fine, there are movies out there right now. I ain't watched them. I saw previews of them. Where they're, where they're telling, where they're, where they're showing these previews, these Mexicans coming up into Texas, coming up into Arizona, coming up to New, New Mexico and California, and retaking the land, and showing them cutting white men's heads off. I know the majority of American citizens are against legal immigration, but every citizen and every elected official and every appointed official ought to be 100% against illegal immigration. Amnesty is wrong. As I said, in 1986, Reagan legitimized 2.6 million illegal immigrants and made them citizens of this country, and he rewarded lawlessness, and we've been paying the price ever since. I say to you again, we must punish severely those that violate the borders of our land. The death penalty ought to be put in place. We ought to have a straight talk with the Mexican government. You mess with us, we'll put you all out of business. We'll, we'll, we'll set it up and make a farm out of it down there. The drug war could be won if we wanted to win it bad enough. I close saying this. The little Mexican kids are cute, amen? Amen. Can I say something to you if I was a Mexican boy, 13, 14, 15, 16 years old? Can anybody guess where my nose would be pointed? Be pointed north. The Jews used to call it the Golden Land when they were trying to get here. The Russian Jews trying to immigrate over here called it the Golden Land. I want to go to the Golden Land. You grew up down there in a clay hut, nasty and filth, broke, no opportunity, no hope. And you hear that up here you can make more money in a day than you can make in a month down there. You could have some clothes. All kinds of entertainments, things to do. Folks, listen, it's no marvel to me that they're drawn to this land. But you can't let personal emotion run your life. Let me say before I go home today, I want to say something to you very clearly. I've got a little ring in there or something, boys. I assume most everybody in this auditorium agrees with at least 50% of what I preached this morning, hopefully. I'd sure hope that you're against illegal immigration. How many of you is against illegal immigration? Yeah. All right, let me tell you something here today, and we're going to go home. According to the Scripture, there's a golden land. I want to go there. It's called heaven. It's got streets of gold, gates of pearl. A city. 
But did you know the Bible calls what the Bible called me? The Bible said I was an alien and an outcast. And did you know what? The Bible teaches that God's got an immigration policy. <laughs> He's got a place you can go to and, and uh, prepare to go and go through the proper way. Listen to me. You're not going to heaven illegally. I've sat here for an hour and I've preached against illegal immigration on our borders. And yet the same American people who are against illegal immigration want to try to go to heaven another way. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh to the Father but by me. And I want to give you some good news today. If you don't go legally, you're not going to heaven. Remember this tabernacle? He said, if you don't come through that door, God, if you try to crawl underneath that thing or go to the top, God, Jesus said, he said, anybody who tries to come, he's, any other way, he said, is the same as a thief and a robber. Jesus said, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved. You cannot go to heaven except through the door of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you cannot go illegally. You will not get in. And so what I say to us this morning is this. How about you this morning? Are you an illegal immigrant? You're trying to go to heaven some way except through the blood of Jesus? Jesus died for your sins on the cross. He shed his blood in your place. He's your substitute. He's your sacrifice. You're not going. If you try to go by how good you are, you're an illegal alien. If you try to go to heaven by getting water baptized, you're an illegal alien. If you try to go to heaven by church membership and attendance, you're an illegal alien. You've got to go through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ to heaven. I want to ask you something. You may not like the illegal immigrants down there, but how about you in heaven? If you've not been born again, you're not going. I'm glad that one day I was a little old illegal immigrant. And you know what? For 20, watch me. For 28 years, I've tried to get to heaven illegally. Bob, I tried to be good. That didn't work. <laughs> I tried. To, I tried to go to church. That didn't work. I tried serving in the church. That didn't work. And finally, on January the 24th, 1982, God said, Reggie. If you don't come through the door, you're going to hell. Although I love you, remember, remember the little Mexican boy? He's sweet as he can be. But son, you've got to come in legal. God loves you, but you're going to go in legal or you're not going to heaven. I want us to stand by our heads together. Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. I want to ask you today, have you been born again the Spirit of God? Let's bow our heads for prayer. The Bible said, Jesus said, Straight is the gate, narrow is the way, and few there be that find it. He said, Broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Every person in this building today has either been saved or you're not saved. You've either been born again of the Spirit of God or you have not. You either have Jesus Christ or you don't. I didn't say you had religion or you don't. I said Jesus Christ. Listen to the Bible. Listen carefully to it. This is the record that God hath given unto us eternal life. And this life is in His Son. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe upon the name of the Son of God that ye may know that ye have Eternal life. I'm preaching to you today that you can have eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Not through church membership. Not through doing better. Not by quitting some things. Oh, I believe in repentance. God knows. But I'll tell you something. In fact, you won't turn to God without... You, know, you can't come to Jesus without repenting. You've got to turn. You've got to turn today from your sin. Turn from the world. You've got to turn from this world to Jesus Christ. You've got to turn from your sin. But I'm telling you something. You'll not get into heaven illegally. God ain't going to say, oh, let this one in. It's okay. God's not going to say five years down the road, well, let's just give amnesty to all those people in hell and get them out of there. Nuh-uh. God is a holy and a just God, and He does not lie. And He's made a way for you, and it's free. Jesus paid it all. 
What you have to do is repent of your sin and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that he suffered and died for you on the cross and shed his blood and died in your place and paid for your sins and he paid for them all. And God says, all that come to me, I will no wise cast out. As many as received him, to them gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And what I want to ask you this today is this. Are you an illegal alien? you trying to go to heaven some way other than what God has prescribed through the blood of his son? Jesus again said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh to the Father but by me. I'm not asking you to become a member of this church today. I'm not asking you to start attending even here today. What I'm asking today is to come to Jesus Christ. In this building today, how many of you say, Brother Reggie, by God's sweet grace, there was a time when I was an alien and an enemy of God, and I tried to go to heaven my own way. But I got stopped at the border, and God told me how to come in legally, and I did. And I received Jesus as my Savior, and he's my only claim to heaven today. He's my only claim is Jesus Christ, God's Son. Would you raise your hand today? And bless the Lord for it and worship Him just now and say, God, thank you for letting an alien and an enemy and a poor, broken enemy come into your place to be with you. God, thank you for making a way for an alien like me to come into heaven. You may put your hands down today. If you're here today and you couldn't raise your hand, but you'd like to be able to, here's what I want you to do right now where you're standing. Right now where you're standing, I want you to do something. I want you to pray. I want you to turn your heart and your soul and your spirit to God Almighty, the God of this Bible. And I want you to say to God, dear God, I know I'm a sinner. I'm an alien. I'm separated from you. And I have no right to heaven. But dear God, I want to go. And I know the only way to go is through your son, Jesus Christ. That he suffered for me and died on that cross and shed his blood for my sin and rose from the dead. And dear God, today I want to receive Jesus right now as my Savior. I want to come through your door. I want to come through the way that you prescribed to go to heaven. God, I don't want to die and go to hell. I want Christ as my Savior and heaven as my home. I want the forgiveness of my sin. And oh, dear God, I repent of my sin and I trust Jesus Christ right now. I believe on him as my Savior. God, save me for Jesus' sake. I want you to pray that the best you can this morning. I know that... You know, listen, it's a work of the Holy Spirit, dear friend. It's a work of the Holy Spirit. You don't just do things in just some intellectual activity. It has to be God working in you. It's real, man. It's real. But I'm asking you, call on the Lord today and say, Dear God, have mercy upon me and save me today for Jesus' sake. And let me tell you something. I want to give you some good news. The Bible says, All that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. I will in no wise. God doesn't refuse anybody. Whosoever will, let him come. Oh, I'm so glad that God said, let the Irishman come. Let the German come. Let the Indian come. Let the Mexican come. Let the Asian come. Let the European come. Let the Middle Eastern come. Let the African come. Whosoever will, let him come. Oh, man alive. You know, when we get to heaven, oh, listen, folks, there's going to be people from all over the globe in heaven because they came through the door of Jesus Christ. I hope you'll do that today. As our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, now let me tell you something. If you've asked God to save you today, you need not be ashamed. In fact, you better not be ashamed. The Bible said, whosoever believeth shall not be ashamed. I'm not not trying to twist your arm. I'm not trying to... Work you around. I'm just giving you a chance today to acknowledge by an uplifted hand. Hey, preacher, I just want to acknowledge I asked God to save me today, and I trust that he did. I just believe him. That's all I know to tell you. I just believe God saved me today. I, I did what you asked. I prayed and asked God to save me. Is there a hand in this building anywhere? Up high and back down. Up high so I can see it. Hold it up until I acknowledge it. I've asked God to save me today. Anywhere in this building. Anybody. Anybody. I don't see a hand. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for this time. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Dear God, help us to have the right balance. Help us to have mercy and compassion toward people. And yet, Father, help us to know that, Lord, you have established borders. And God, to keep chaos and, Lord, to keep Christ and Christianity, Lord, and and to keep law and order and to keep prosperity and to keep freedom. Lord, we've got to have borders. 
I pray send this message to where it needs to go. Bless these people. Help us to stand. Help us to speak the truth in love. Help us to love people, Lord, even if they're not of our nationality, if they're not the same color we are, if they're not the same nation we are. don't matter, Lord. Help us to love them like you loved them. And help us to know that you're no respecter of persons and that we're not special because we're born in America. We just live in a special land. Oh, God, help us to humble ourselves and appreciate what you've given us and fight and stand to retain it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You're dismissed. We'll see you tonight.